I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Today is Friday, praise God. I always encourage you on Fridays, take time this weekend listening to those words again and again and again and again. Praise God. Let it sink in your heart and remember to share it with others. Oh yes, share it with others. Let it begin a conversation you have with someone. And God will bless you mightily. Praise God. Hey, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make requests for our daily bread? This is so important. So release your faith right now. Join me as we say, Father, I demand from heaven my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Hey, God is doing amazing things in our lives. He is. He is. He is telling us, hey, it's time to walk right into my rest. Praise God. And so I was telling you every word God has spoken, every word God has spoken. So I was sharing with you yesterday that God has said something that we are not paying close attention to. And what is that thing? That he gives blessings to his beloved even when they do nothing, even when they sleep. And Jesus reinforcing that statement said, take no, uh, no thought means no thought. Take no thought. So the moment you begin to think, hmm, how am I going to feed? How am I going to pay my fees? How am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to do this? How am I going to make progress in life? Ah, look at me. How old am I? How am I? When am I? How am I? You are sinning. Jesus clearly said, take no thought for your life. You know, somebody will say, how possible can that be? Now, that's the thing about the word of God. We Grow to believe the word of God. See, we rise to believe it. So it is strong men that believe his word, not weak men. You know, sometimes people think the folks who spend time in God's word are maybe folks who are not intelligent enough to do something else. Or who, now I know there are some lots. There are lots of people out there who who are just busy bodies. You know they are, they 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 really are not doing anything. You know what I mean by that? But it takes great intelligence to understand God. I tell you the truth. A fool can never understand God. To understand God, to hear God, and analyze and understand what He's saying. You see, number one, God, first of all, must see you as an intelligent person for him to even come talk to you. Because he is the one that brought the principle, don't cast what is holy to swines. See that? So he's not going to walk to a fool and try to teach a fool his word. Mm -mm. He wouldn't do that. So for the word of God to come to you, first and foremost, God considers you more intelligent than the average people that's why you you come to a congregation of a thousand people i can tell you this truth yeah yes without any mathematical statistics or, or known research that i have done but those those who are researchers can do this research and you realize it is true in a congregation of about one thousand people i dare say there are a number of people in that congregation that hear the voice of God frequently and consistently may not be up to 50. I didn't say 500, I say 50 in a congregation of a thousand. They are mostly very few. You see? Now, now just imagine jo Joshua, uh, uh, Moses sent out 12 men to go spy the land. 10 of them came back with an evil report. Two came back with a, with, a, with a different report. Now, what's the difference between the 10 and the two? 
The two heard God, the other ten did not hear God. Now, but these were all honorable men that were picked by Moses. You see that? So the number of people who pay attention to God in the midst of such, they are usually very few. And so God prizes them so high, not because they are few, but because in that midst, those are the people God could pick and say, these ones are the intelligent ones. Some people think we just carry Bible and just begin to talk. No, sir. No, sir. Sometimes we spend weeks to get this thing. Not because we're so dull it will take us weeks to understand. No. But you are trying to assess the mind of God, the depth of God's mind concerning this truth. And you're asking yourself, is this something I can live on? Is this something I can lean on? How true is this thing? And so you pray and pray and pray and pray. And the Lord begins to open up his words to you. He begins to open up his heart to you. Now you begin to see, wow. Wow, this is true. How would Jesus say, take no thought. I put this to you. Bring these statements to Christians, churchgoers, even pastors. Bring this statement to pastors. And, 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 and now not everybody, I'm, I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about those who have mastered the, the, the lifestyle of faith. You bring this scripture to lots of people and say, what did Jesus mean? Take no thought. So did he mean it literally or he meant it figurative? You would hear people begin to say, no, you see, it depends on how you see it. No, take no thought means take no thought. Take zero thought. Zero. Take no, none at all. Don't think it. So how, because that's the problem usually. How can someone live without thinking or taking thought? about this this now that's exactly the rest jesus is saying we should walk right into you know the truth mm. Mm. father open up your word and let our hearts be filled with it for this is what pleases you lord that your children will receive your word and be glad on the earth with it Thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are doing this in our generation and in our time. In Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You see, God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. And just before they left Egypt, I read that to you two days ago. The Bible says God gave them favor before the Egyptians. Everything they needed, they got it free of charge. Gold, silver, clothes, everything they need. The Bible actually said they plundered the Egyptians. They didn't go to their houses knocking. Bring your gold. Come. Will, you, will you bring? No. Hey, ah, yeah, I heard you guys are leaving tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Um, is there anything you want? Yeah, I want gold necklace. Oh, okay. Come, 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 get it. Come. Open the box of gold. Like, oh, wow, you have this um, gold um, earrings too. Yeah, you want it? Yeah, take it. You know, what about the bracelet? Oh, yeah, yeah. Take it. You know, what about... It? They plundered. They didn't go with guns. They didn't go with threats. The Egyptians just opened up their house to them. Take anything you want. Take, carry on. Go. God was the one that brought them to that process. Now, here's the point. Now, God brought them into the wilderness where they would not need any of those things. Isn't that not amazing? They would not need any of those things walking through that wilderness. Yet, God gave them favor and made them to possess all those things from the Egyptians. Then God led them. Now, you would think they would use it to trade for food. No, they didn't. They, needed, they didn't need to do that. So, they got into the wilderness and God began to feed them every day with manna. Hmm. We've not needed money for the past one week. Yeah, that's true. We've not bought anything. Yeah. So have we, oh, oh, yeah, God has been giving us food. Uh-huh. Okay. 
So what's all these things for? Huh? I don't know. Let's just be going and see. So God was feeding them with manna. But you know the problem? They kept thinking, so what do we do when this manna stops? What do we do when this manna stops? Even though God had shown them favor in Egypt, they plundered the Egyptians. That's supposed to register something in their mind. They came into the wilderness. God was feeding them with manna every day. That's to give them something in their head. That, hey, have you noticed God takes care of us? You yeah, have noticed. And you notice he gave us wealth? Yeah, I've noticed. And we don't even seem to need the wealth right now. No, we don't. Okay. So, what are we doing with our lives? Trusting him. Let him tell us what to do with our lives. Yeah, because we're not hungry. Are you hungry? No, I'm not hungry. Do you need anything? No, I, I have lots of things. So what do we do with our lives? Can we begin to seek God to know what he wants? Now that's the attitude God was believing the children of Israel will exhibit. That was what he was waiting for. But so sorry, he didn't get it. He waited for so long and he swore, these people will not enter into my rest. Brothers and sisters, that rest still exists with, for the people of God. That rest still exists. God is bringing forth that rest in our day and in our time. He's giving you the opportunity to find and locate his word, to locate his voice, to find what he has said. What has God said about your life? Allow your mind to go through that process of renewal. Allow your mind. Brothers and sisters, that's where the work is. That's where the work is. But you must do this work. This is not a work anybody can. This is not a praying and someone shouting amen to. No, this is a work that you must do. Meditating on the word of God until it becomes your words, until it becomes your mind. Your mind functions exactly the way God is functioning. You must get to that point. Brothers and sisters, that is the rest we are talking about. Where your mind and God's mind have become one in the matter. Where you think about it, say, no, God, you know, you know, you just see that your mind begins to drift. I've got four months to the end of my rent. What do I do? Wow, how much have I saved? Mm, wow. And I, I need to get some more jobs. I need to do some more things. And then he said, but he said I should not take thoughts. Ah, you know what? I apologize, Lord. I have been sinning against you by taking thoughts. Now I'm going to pay my rent. Now I'm going to pay my bill, Lord. I'm so sorry. I repent from today. I drop all those thoughts. And, and you know the devil always show up. He said, I drop all those thoughts. So how are you going to pay your house rent? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. God is going to take care of it. <laughs> now, that's how we do not take thought. We do not take thought because we recognize the one who's taking thought for us. Hallelujah. That's the truth. That is the reason. So when Jesus said, take no thought, he didn't tell your mind to be idle. He didn't tell your mind to be fallow, just be dead, not thinking of anything. So what are you thinking about? Nothing, not thinking of anything. I know most times it's a lie. Praise God. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about his kingdom, his righteousness, and his way of doing things. That's what my mind is on. That's what I'm thinking. So I say, oh, a penny for your thought. Oh, wow. You know, you know, Jesus instructed us that we should ask the Holy Spirit anything. I'm just thinking now, oh, man, what am I going to ask the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Without care. Do we... How do we just believe him? I do not take thought because I know he has taken thought 
over all these things. Your father knows that you have need of them. Your father knows that you have need of them. Your father knows that the rent is going to expire in three months time. Your father knows that the school fees is going to be paid in five months time. Your father knows that you need new clothes in two weeks time. Your father knows that you need to pay your bills in three days time. Your father knows that you need to take care of your children. Your father knows that you need to buy baby milk. Your father knows that you need to get married. Your father knows that you need that certificate. Your father knows. He knows he knows hey what does it mean he knows he's taking all those thoughts even before you were created and by those thoughts he had spoken words concerning each one of them he's spoken Am I shouting? <laughs> oh, glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray you will understand these things. Why are you taking thought again for what your father has finished taking thought about? He concluded the thoughts and he made a decision. You know what the decision he made? He made the decision to take off those thoughts from you. Hallelujah. And so he began to do stuff about it. He began to speak about it. He began to speak about it. He began, brothers and sisters, God have spoken. He has spoken. Oh, oh, oh. You know your limitation? I am the Brady Kashaya. Hey, le kundi se le kaliba haska. Can you handle something if I tell you? Do you know your limitation? Your limitation to what God has said and why you are not enjoying it is because you have locked your mind to what we call the Bible. I must tell you this one today. I can't, I can't say I'll, I'll continue. Because <laughs> today's Friday. The Bible does not contain everything that God has said. It doesn't. So God never told us to trust in the Bible. Because brothers and sisters, it is incomplete. Now when I say it is incomplete, I'm not saying there are some books that were not added. That's not what I'm talking about. Even Jesus alone, John said the things which he did, if, it, if all are to be written, the whole world cannot contain. Now he was not exaggerating. He wasn't. What he was trying to say is that don't look at these things and count them and say this is all Jesus did. So don't look at the Bible and say this is all God said. That is the reason Jesus said to us, I leave you with the Holy Spirit who is the comforter. And he said his job in your life is to bring you to all truth. What's truth? Everything the Father has said. It is his job to begin to reveal to you everything the Father has said that concerns you. Praise God. We've read what he said to Abraham. We've read what he said to Isaac. We've read what he said to Jacob, brothers and sisters. But to enter into his rest, you need to find out what he said to you. What he said about you. And the only way you will find that out is by relating with the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus said labor, when, 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 when Hebrew says labor to enter into that rest, he is saying walk on your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Find out what has been said about you. I'm not saying what the Bible says about you. Brothers and sisters, hey, that's the starting point. But we go deeper from what the Bible says to what God says concerning me, Atuba Judge. Hey, I have my own Bible with him. You have your own Bible with him. It is the Holy Spirit that opens our eyes, opens our understanding. So when we begin to speak those things that we hear of him, 
We speak them and then we enter into rest. We speak them and then we enter into, why are we not entering rest? Oh, because we've been speaking what he said to Abraham. We've been speaking what he said to David. We've been speaking what he said to Joshua. And after saying what he said to Joshua, we cannot rest because the work is not done. After speaking what he said to Abraham, we cannot rest because the work is not done. We start from what he said to Abraham, but we must end by what he said concerning us. If you don't get to that place, there is no rest for you. The time is up. Hi, Kamaya. Father, take everyone at the sound of my voice and bring them to that place of truth and reality. That your word will open up and they will see it for themselves. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> Bye.